fire. Hi guys, Napison is here. Welcome to another episode how to make days in World of Tanks. If you're not interested in making days, surely this will help you to perform better in the game. This time I picked the tier 5 French light tank, the AMX ERC. The project for this vehicle was elaborated between 1957 and 1961. The ERC AMX was meant to provide French airborne troops with an air transportable vehicle that could engage heavy tanks. Only one prototype was made, but the tank never saw service. This vehicle has 25 horsepower per ton, which ensures a great mobility and an extraordinary maneuverability. The camo is also good. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a fully rotated turret, but thanks to its great maneuverability, in some cases you can flank the enemies. So let's go to the tactic to see the position of the AMX ERC. To get the ERC you will start with the FCM 36 at tier 2, followed by the AMX 38 tier 3 with an incredible armor for its tier. At tier 4 we have the duck tank, the AMX 40 also with an incredible armor for its tier, who unlocks the way to the ERC at tier 5, one of the best light tanks from the game. So let's see how we gonna upgrade this tank. We're gonna put the second pair of tracks with 38 travel speed, the last engine with 180 horsepower, the last radio with only 400 meter signal range. The turret is the stuck turret with 360 meters view range, 44 travel speed, but is not a fully rotated turret and 20 mm frontal armor. And from these three guns, we're gonna choose this one. The 90mm gun. And this gun has 120mm of penetration with the regular ammo and that is AP. And it has 240 damage per shell. 150mm of penetration with the gold round and that is APCR. And it has also 240 damage per shell. 45 mm of penetration with HE and 320 damage per shell. Let's see now the actual reload time. The actual reload time is awful. Is 11.84 seconds. The gun depression is very bad. Minus 5 degrees. The aiming time is also bad. 2.72 seconds. The accuracy is alright, 0.36 and the DPM is the lowest from all the tier 5 light tanks. So here guys, only 1217. Let's see now the general stats. What we see here is calculated with the crew skills, equipment and consumables that we have on this tank. And because we talked about DRC's gun in the upgrades, let's start this with the survivability. As you can see, it has the lowest hit points from all the tier 5 light tanks, only 320. And in the opposite side is the German light tank, the Leopard, with 380 hit points. Let's see now the armor. The hull. 25mm on the front, 10mm at the sides and 50mm at the rear. The turret is 20mm on the front, 50mm at the sides and 10 mm at the rear. It's useless to check the ERC's armor in the tank GG because it's paper scene, specific to light tanks. Let's see now the mobility. It weighs only 7.11 tons, fully equipped, engine power 180. It gives an awesome 25.32 horsepower per ton. The top speed is also good for a light tank, 60 km per hour, and the reverse speed is 20 km per hour. The reverse speed is ok, 42.33. 
As you noticed, it has a very good mobility thanks to its incredible 25 horsepower per ton. Let's see now the concealment. Very good. 31.84 for a stationary vehicle and the same for a moving one. Let's see now the spotting. View range, awesome. 479 meters and <laughs> look the signal range. The walls from his class, only 426 meters. So the first step after upgrading the tank is the crew skills. DLC has a crew of two members, the commander and the driver. The commander is also the gunner, the radio operator and the loader. So the two most important skills in the game are Six Sense and Brothers in Arms. But none of them is functional till it reaches 100%. I put camo instead and I will change it to 6 cents when it reaches 100%. The second step is the equipment and we gonna put the improved ventilation class 1 that gives plus 5% to our crew skills, the gun rammer for faster reload and the binocular telescope that gives plus 25% to view range, active when the vehicle is stationary. The third step is the exterior. Because the tank is so small and has good camo values, let's make it better. And I apply camo for 7 days. For winter. For summer. And from desert. This paint gives the tank plus 3% better camo values. The fourth step is the consumables, which are small repair kit, small first aid kit and the most important strong coffee. That gives plus 10% to all crew skills and perks for the curse of the battle. With these combinations you have to make these. And let's see now this tank in action. Let's go. Welcome to the replay. The map is Redshire and as you can see this is a tier 6 matchup. I'm gonna present you guys my first ace gameplay because I think that this one is the most relevant for what I said earlier in the garage. With this tank it is a little bit hard to flank, <laughs> not impossible, but it is hard because of the lack of the fully rotated turret and the shitty DPM that is only 1217 with all the crew skills equipment and consumables that I put on this tank. Let's not forget the pull gun depression that is only minus 5 degrees and which is very hard to use on a map like this with lots of heels. As I said in the garage I don't have 6 cents, only 40% of camo and for a light tank 6 cents is crucial. I used to carry 31 regular ammo and 5 gold shells that is 36 rounds which means a total of 8640 damage. So we have enough rounds to put our mark on this game. Fortunately this map has a lot of bushes and hiding places. Good for hiding a small tank. DRC AMX can sneak out very easily. I position the tank in the middle of the map in F4. Trying to spot for my teammates. Although this tank doesn't have an excellent travel speed, it has a very good mobility thanks to the incredible 25 horsepower per ton. I see the Cheeto in F1 and he just missed me. I spotted also the VK3001D in H2. I'm waiting for the Cheeto to come after me and I'm hiding in this bush. 
Come on, Chito. <laughs> but the Matilda appeared instead. Oh boy, I shared more than half of it, its life. As you can see here, the ERC has a very good reverse speed. 23 km per hour. Come on, Chito. I'm still waiting for you. <laughs> if I was waiting for a tank, I woke up with three. Hello there, Chinookai. And my teammates finished him. Hello there, VK3001D. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Let's advance. Finally I meet you Mr. Chito. I missed. Of course troll gun. He missed me too. I'm flanking this tank using my speed. So I damage him from behind. And again. And bye bye. This is my first kill in this game. Let's move closer to the enemy base. As you noticed, I'm always on the run with this tank because it is a small, rapid target, so it is very hard to be hit. So the enemy RT is not in the K1 position. Let's advance straight to the enemy base. I spotted the murder and one of the enemy RT in the K line. Hello there, Murder 3018. You see here that it's very hard to flank without a fully rotated turret. And it is game over for me. I hope that I managed to highlight here in this replay all the weak points of this tank and its playstyle. Let's see now the postgame stats. So here's our mastery badge Ace Tanker. And we also managed to pick up the high caliber for all the damage done in this game. We managed to give 1830 damage. We picked up one kill and we received 1149 basic experience. But what matters most to us is the spotting damage. And that is, look here, 1093 plus 1830 damage given. It is almost 3000 combined damage at tier 5. From my point of view, if this tank had a fully rotated turret, it would have been overpowered. What do you think guys? Do you agree with me? Please share your thoughts in a comment below. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this. Good luck on the battlefield and see you in the next episode. Ready, aim, fire!